Namaste. I'm Rishabh and in this episode, we'll be talking about another form of Indian classical musical ornamentation, which is known as Gamak. In the previous episode, we spoke about Mead and in this episode, we'll talk about Gamak. Now, what is Gamak? Let us approach Gamak the same way we approached Mead. First, we look at the bare basic minimum definition that we need in order to understand it. And then we try and look at it from the viewpoint of a listener. Why is it important to me to know about Gamak? Right, so first of all, the definition. Let's do as we did with Mead. Let's take four notes. Sa, Re, Ga, Ma. Sa, Re, Ga, Ma. Now these are our four notes. Now if I were to sing them in Akar, Akar as you remember, we do not pronounce the notes. We just sing the notes as A. Ah. So, ah, 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 ah. now as you can understand, each of these notes is a different solid entity. So how do I differentiate between these notes? There's not much differentiation between the notes other than their inherent frequency. So Sa is at a specific frequency, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Dha, so on. Now what I can do, for example, in Akar, I can also do it in Swar, but while I'm singing the notes, I'll give a slight emphasis. So, when I was singing the notes, I gave a slight emphasis. And you know what? You can do it with me too because it's very simple. When you're singing the note, all that you have to do is you have to exhale on top of the note. I, of course, exaggerated it, but all you have to do is do ha, ha, ha on top of each note and that will give you gamak. That is it as far as we the listeners are concerned. Otherwise theoretically there are like 10-15 types of different types of gamaks. But there's honestly no point in learning 15 different types of gamak if you're just a listener. Now suppose I'm singing an akar tan. Now suppose I'm going up the octave so all the way up till sa from the lower sa to upper sa Let's sing it in Akar. As you saw, to differentiate between each note, I'm just emphasizing each note a little bit by the process of exhalation on top of the note that we're singing. So, now why did I make you go up the octave? Now, suppose an artist on stage is singing, let's say, a tan in Akar. So, ah, how will he differentiate between the notes that he's singing? And so rapidly, he will employ the usage of gamak. So, <laughs> suppose he's singing combinations. <laughs> now, if he were to do this without gamak, it would sound very plain. It would sound like. <laughs> And with gamak, it'll sound like ah. See, you can differentiate between each note that he's singing. And this is what is called as taan ko dane dar banana, which is basically, dana is basically a, a grain. So dane dar means making the taan granular. Now, what is each grain? What is each dana? Each dana is the note that you're singing. And how do you make each dana or each note or each grain prominent? by using gamak. Now again, if you're learning, your guru will tell you this, or if you're a listener, you will see another note being emphasized by many masters on YouTube or otherwise, which is when you are using gamak, especially let's say in an akar taan, usage of too much gamak will actually lead to instability of the notes that you're singing. And usage of less gamak will make it sound very bland, very plain. So, uh, Sounds plain. Sounds very plain. Employ normal amount of gamak. Employ too much gamak. You saw how employing too much gamak led to a kind of an instability of the notes that I was singing and it didn't even sound very good. So that is probably the take home message of the day that usage of appropriate amount of gamak is absolutely necessary in order to maintain the beauty of the rag or whatever it is that you're singing. Moreover, gamak is an ornamentation. It is not the music itself. So it has to be kept, you know, kind of subtle most of the time. Now, if you ask me the stuff that I just told you, is more than enough for you as a listener or me as a listener to go ahead and start sort of deciphering gamak from an Indian classical music performance. 
Now, as we did in the episode of Mead, we will also try and understand why is Gamak important to me as a listener and why is the artist using Gamak in the first place.